Finally, an update on my humanoid robot project. I haven't posted any videos on YouTube for a while, um, but um, I'm ready to give you a status of uh, what I have so far. Right, so here we have the robot's arm. I use some elastic bands on this side um, so that by default the fingers, they return to the initial position. And I have some uh, steel wires going through the hand and the wrist and so the finger movements will be controlled by a series of um, servo motors um, in the forearm. Due to the limited space I had to make some compromises for now but I might redesign this in the future. I haven't added yet any sensors in the fingers or the palm but I, I expect to do that. I did include an electromagnet here so that I can pick up metal objects uh, using this when, when activated. So the types of motions that um, I have included now in the wrist are flexion and extension. So this is extension and flexion and then also side-by-side -side movement like this. And these are controlled by this servo and this servo because I didn't have enough space for the servos for all the fingers then actually these two uh, fingers are controlled simultaneously by one servo here and this is how it looks on the other side these are the wires that are coming out from the electromagnet and the fingers just stay like that um, until um, they're controlled by the servos. So let's try moving the, um, the thumb. And it's uh, pretty strong over here. Index finger. And again, it's uh, pretty strong. No problem keeping that in place. No problem with that. Let's try some uh, rotation here. This um, flexion, extension of the wrist. And so it's also able to push itself off the table. So it's uh, pretty strong at the moment. All right, so this is the hand and this is kind of the, the size of it. Now we can look at the elbow and upper arm. Um, this one is powered by stepper motors. Um, so I'm using two uh, stepper motors and using timing belts. I can do some pretty cool movements. So of course one thing is that my elbow needs to move like this. And this is just driven by these uh, timing bells, the two motors acting at the same time. However, because of this uh, very cool design that I have here, I can actually also perform rotation. Um, rotating the entire forearm from this place just by reversing the direction of these two gears. And now of course I can move this because I don't have the stepper motors plugged in, but when I have them plugged in and working then this will be the movement that's performed. So instead of actually having this kind of rotational movement um, here at the wrist, 
basically for, for this kind of movement. I'm actually doing that uh, from the elbow, from here. So the entire forearm will, will uh, rotate. And here at the upper arm, I have one more stepper motor uh, that is supposed to do the rotation of the entire upper arm. Um, and then it will be connected to the shoulder here. So what I have so far is I have a planetary gearbox here with sun, the sun and three planets around it. On top I will have this one, so this will go here and this will basically move. If I rotate it to the right place then I have a small uh, hole here where I can put the ball bearings in and when I put all of them it's kind of a locking system for the entire thing. Okay, so I can plug this in and we can actually see it moving. And I'm gonna use the encoder to rotate. This one. Let's see how it looks. And this part will be connected to the shoulder. And so this is the arm. And this is the main body of the robot, the trunk. And there are some 3D printed components and then stepper motors for now for controlling different movements of the trunk. So there are two stepper motors for moving the arms up and down and two for the trunk. Let's have a closer look. So there's a stepper motor over here and one on the other side. The stepper motor is used for linear motion up and down and when that happens it pushes that rod up and that moves the arm up. Now I don't have the arm attached yet but imagine here's the shoulder and then the rest of the arm um, and this component would go up and down. And then I have another stepper motor here for the rotation of the arm uh, sideways, but I'm not sure this will be the final design. So let's see how it moves. So I will also add some limit switches uh, to limit the range of motion and that it stops here. And now the arm is up um, and basically this is implemented in a similar way on the other side as well. For the torso here uh, I have a bit more complicated system. So one kind of movement, um, one degree of movement is here so that the torso can go like this. And then I also have the movement uh, left and right. So it will uh, be able to do left and right and then forward and backward. All right, so these are the two stepper motors that I will use and the same approaches for the uh, stepper motors that I had above and because this uh, point has also two degrees of movement then uh, it will be able to do a bit more movements than uh, on the upper arms. So if I rotate this one we'll see that the body kind of goes to the side and if I at the same time would rotate this one And now I just have it um, hanging, but when I'll have it standing, I don't think it will look as weird. When both are down, then it will pull it uh, forward. You can see the entire body is now at an angle, compared to if I release, then it straightens. And then another component that I've been working on is the skull or the head of the robot. This is how it's looking now. I managed to fit in the Raspberry Pi in here and a lot of servos. There are a lot of things to talk about uh, regarding the head 
and um, as this video starts to get a bit long, um, I think I'll give an update on the skull in the next video. So stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching.